Hi, and welcome to the ultimate guide to Google Cloud Run. I call it the ultimate guide because I tried to cover every aspect of deploying and running your application in the cloud. This is my channel, Discotech. I'm a software developer and I started developing 20 years ago at a time where it was usual to put software on a USB stick and pass it by hand to the software administrator in order to deploy it. I'm standing here today because, of course, I have been already implementing Google Cloud Run solutions for multiple big companies. So I want to start the first chapter by telling you the pros and cons of using Google Cloud Run. The main purpose of Google Cloud Run is to provide a simple way to put your application into the cloud. Google provides a web interface called the Cloud Console and with a click of a mouse button you can do almost every deployment task. When you take for example Kubernetes as a standard way of deploying big applications, you would have to write a lot of scripts, Kubernetes has a big complexity, but of course with Kubernetes you have almost unlimited possibilities. Google Cloud Run applications on the other hand consist of only one container which is running. So for each container you would need to create a separate Google Cloud Run service. There are three very cool features with Google Cloud Run. First of all, you can start and stop an instance whenever you want, whenever it's not needed. This will save you money. Second, Google Cloud Run instances are scalable. You can have up to 100 parallel instances of your application and the scaling will be done automatically without the need of any configuration. And the third feature, which I will show you in this guide, is the possibility to map your own URL to your application. So you can have something like hello.discotech.info, which will be HTTPS secured and will open your application. And of course, Google provides you with a good monitoring and logging and also notifications. So for example, if your application performs badly, you will be notified. As a small highlight of this tutorial, we will even build a CI-CD pipeline. So with a commit to GitHub, a new application will be built. That's cool. So let's create our first Hello World Google Cloud Run instance. All steps of this tutorial are being conducted on a Linux PC. I am running Ubuntu 23 and Google Chrome. So let's start Google Chrome and go to the Google Cloud homepage. Console.cloud.google.com is our start address. At this point of time, you already need two preconditions to be fulfilled. First of all, you need a Google account. This is my Google account, this could take. And second, you need to have registered yourself to Google Cloud. There is a free Google Cloud test account. It's valid for 90 days and you have $300 to spend for resources. Of course, you need a credit card when you register yourself, because Google wants to validate that you are no fake account. Google Cloud Run itself is free. There is a concept called free tire, which means that some Google Cloud resources are free if you don't hit a certain limit. So let's have a look at the limits of Google Cloud Run. So two million requests per month are free, 360 gigabytes of memory and one gigabyte of network traffic. So let's assume that all your accesses are existing and you're starting here. Let me give you some quick help about Google's terminology. You, as a software developer, you have your Google Cloud account. Inside your account, you have multiple projects. Each project can be regarded as a kind of separate software. And each project consists of multiple products. We, for example, in this tutorial, will create a new project for our Cloud Run. And this project will consist of two products, the Cloud Run service and the Google Artifact Registry. A project has already been created for me. For our application, we are going to create our project. So we click on here and we click on New Project. You need to give a project name to your project. I will call it My First Cloud Run Project. Please note that a project ID has been generated. This project ID is unique and it's a technical ID which you will need later. For example, if you start to do automation 
in a GitHub action. It might be the case that you got your Google Cloud account from a company. In this case, your company might have different organizations and you would click then on Browse and assign your project to the correct organization. In our case, we don't have an organization, so we click on Create. You see that the project is being created now and after it has been created, you can click on Select Project. So now we are ready to create our first Google Cloud Run resource. You click on the navigation menu and here you can select Cloud Run. There are two kinds of Cloud Run instances. Services and jobs. Services are supposed to be running all the time, while jobs are being temporarily run and stopped then. The standard case is a service, so let's create one. We click on Create Service. When you enter this page for the first time, it might be the case that you need to add your billing information to your project and it might also be the case that the Cloud Run Admin API has to be enabled. So after this has been done, you see the following page. Google Cloud Run is, like many other cloud services, based on Docker images. So what it's actually doing, it's starting a Docker image on a computer somewhere in the cloud. In our case, we would need to upload our Docker images from our local development PC to the cloud. Unfortunately, we didn't do that yet. When we click on Select to select the Docker images, you see that there's an artifact registry or a container registry. I will explain the difference later. And both are empty. So let's close this dialog and instead use the option Test with a Sample Container. Google Cloud Run allows us to take an arbitrary URL of a container freely available in the web and paste it to the container image URL. So what I can do is take the suggested URL and paste it here. And voila, we will take a Hello World container from US-Docker. What we selected now is a so-called one-time deployment. So the Docker images is deployed to Google Cloud Run service and that's it. An alternative is to select the continuous deployment, which means that you can build a new container and deploy it to the Google Cloud Run. But if I select the option, you see one important point. Continuous deployment only works with Google Cloud Build. Google Cloud Build is Google's own CI-CD solution, but I want to use GitHub Actions as a CI-CD pipeline, which offers many more features. So let's stick with the one-time deployment just to get a Hello World application running. Each service needs a name. Hello is pre-selected, which is fine for our case. You also need to select the region where the services are physically hosted. I live in Germany, so I would naturally select Frankfurt. But since I also care for the environment, I select a location with a low CO2 footprint. So let's select Europe West 1, which is in Belgium. Let's talk about CPU allocation and pricing. There are basically two different models. First of all, there's an option to only ch charge you when your application is answering to a request. After your service is answered to the request, your service will be paused. This is the cheapest option and you have good chances to fall under the free tire. So your cloud run will be for free. But you might have the use case that your service is doing periodic background tasks. For example, fetching data once per minute from a database. In this case, you would need to select the CPU always being allocated. In this case, you will be charged for every minute which your service is running, but at least you're charged differently when your service is idle. In our case, we will start with the first option. Now let's talk about auto-scaling. The fact that Google Cloud Run supports auto-scaling is awesome. I made another tutorial about Azure Container Instances and they don't have auto-scaling. Auto-scaling means that if your application gets a lot of requests, Google Cloud Run will start additional instances. So this is a very easy and simple case of parallel processing. The maximum number of instances is 100, but maybe let's lower it to 5, which means that no more than 5 instances will be running in parallel. It is also crucial to set the minimum number of instances correctly. Zero means that your application will not be running and when a request comes in, your application will be starting. If your application is just a test application 
and it's seldomly accessed, it's best to keep it to zero. But if you have a productive application, you want to set it to one. The problem is that if you set it to zero, you have some delays for the first request after a long idle time. In our cases, we select the cheapest version, which is zero. Now let's talk about the ingress control. There is an option that you have an internal application, which might only be accessible inside your company, so it's leave it to internal. In our cases, we want our application to be accessible via the internet, so we leave the ingress control to all. Concerning authentication, you have two variants. First of all, you can say that all access is unauthenticated. This is a typical case for a public API or a public website. But you could also use Google IAM for authentication. IAM stands for Identity and Access Management. When you open Container, Network, Security, you get a lot more options. For example, you can define the port on which your container is listening, which is typically port 8080. This is the internal port. The external port is of course port 80 or port 443. You can define additional container commands, pass some arguments to the container. One option which is nice is to start up CPU boost, which means that when your container is starting, it gets more CPU, so the container start will be faster. Then we can limit the amount of memory and uh, the number of CPUs. So let's say we need one gigabyte and two CPUs. We also have a request timeout, which is 300 seconds. You might increase this for services with a very, very long calculation time, but usually 300 seconds is a lot. You can limit the maximum concurrent request of each instance. You might have an application which needs some specific Linux commands. Then you would select the second generation execution environment. The first generation is better in scaling. We can leave it to default, which means that Cloud Run will select a suitable environment for us because for the first time, these are very complicated questions and I really recommend to click on learn more to read about that. You can also add environment variables to your container, add secrets, add health checks and Cloud SQL connection, but currently we don't need that. Also for networking and for security, we leave everything as it is and click on create. Now you can see that your container is being created. It also gets a unique ID. After waiting for a minute or two, our application is running. You can see it when you see the green checkbox. But we want to see our application. This is very easy. We click on the URL. Our application is starting in a new tab and you see a stupid website. That's our application. So fine, our Hello World application is running. But now we want to monitor our application. Monitoring has two purposes. First of all, we want to make sure that the performance of our application is fine. Second, we want to make sure that auto-scaling works. So if there are a lot of requests, we want to make sure that uh, multiple instances are running. And of course, in order to save money, we want to make sure that our application, if it's not requested, then it's shut down. This will save us money. The fastest way to monitor your Cloud Run service is to go to console.cloud.google.com and in the navigation menu, you select Cloud Run. Now you see in the list of services your Hello service. You can click on it. Since your service has a fixed URL, you can simply bookmark it. So you can add a bookmark for Cloud Run Hello. On the first page, you immediately see a lot of metrics. Let's trigger these metrics and go to the URL. And then you reload it sometimes. So this will bring you some more metrics. So let's go through all the metrics. First, you have the request count. This is just the number of requests per second. Then you have the request latency. This is the time which a container needs to calculate and respond. Google uses percentiles for this value. It means that 50% of all requests have been answered within 3.5 milliseconds. 95% of all requests have been answered within 14.8 milliseconds and 99% within 15.76 milliseconds. You can also monitor the number of instances. After our request, one instance has been started 
And after there were no more requests, it got idle. So there were two idle containers and these idle containers were stopped after 10 minutes. At our second request, only one instance was started. And since we didn't continue to load, our idle time was there. And you can see that the, there was a second container just being started, but now it's idle. So Google Cloud Run decides where to start how many containers. A third very important value is a container startup latency. In our case, containers are only started when a request is made. So you can have a look at the startup latency. In our case, the container starts very quickly. The billable container instance time is the amount of CPU time which you pay for. Whenever you do a request, you pay for the instance being running. Then you have the CPU utilization of the container, which is very low because we only have a Hello World container. So 99% of all requests use less than 1% of CPU. You also have statistics for memory utilization of the container. This is a percentage value, so the container uses less than 2% of the memory available. Since we reserve 2 gigabytes, 2% is about 40 megabytes. Send bytes and received bytes are for communication, which the container does to other instances. For example, our container could forward our query to the database and get a result, and this would be sent and received bytes. Since our container doesn't communicate with other containers, the value is completely empty. And on the bottom, we see the maximum number of concurrent requests. You might wonder, why do we have half request concurrently? The reason is that Google Cloud Run started a second container, but only the first container got a request. So on average, you have a half request per container. These metrics give you a real nice real-time overview about the performance of your service. But you don't want to watch your metrics all the time. So what you want is a so-called service level objective. This is the kind of how you imagine your service to perform. And when it doesn't perform like that, you get a notification. So let's create one example for a service level objective. We click on create service level objective. There are different types of metrics. And you can also select if you want to measure it by the number of requests or by the number of time, which means that, for example, there might be five minutes where service is badly available. Let's monitor the latency. I select latency and click on continue. So what we see now is the current latency. I define a good latency to be a threshold of 40 milliseconds, which means that everything below 40 milliseconds has a good latency. Then we click on continue. Next, I can define if I want to count this latency on a daily, on a weekly, or on a monthly basis. Let's count that on a daily basis. Next, we should define how many percents of requests we expect to be in the optimum performance window. We say that we want 95% of all these requests to be below 40 milliseconds. We click on continue. And then we see that we also have this as a JSON, which we can copy it for later. And we create an SLO. So here we see the SLO, which we have created. Let's go through it. First of all, an SLO has a so-called error budget. In our case, it's 73%, which means that we start from 100. And the more requests are slower than 40 milliseconds, the less our error budget. When the error budget is zero, an alert is fired. Alerts are in the standard way. Here, some notifications, which you will see here. Of course, you can configure the alerts to be via mail and so on, but we'll leave that for now. We can click on the SLO to get some more information. We can see that the service level indicator generally is still above 95, but here we had a time when the service needed more than 40 milliseconds to respond. This made our error budget less. But until now, no alerts have been fired. Next, let's have a look at the container logs. When you click on logs, you see all text which the container puts out on its console. This is the classic log. So you can see whenever you are requesting the application, 
there is a log. For example, we can see that we use Google Chrome to access our service URL and 200 was a response. You can also see that the container started several times, like at 12.55 it started, then it was shut down and at 12.58 it started again. If you only want to see errors, you can go to the severity and select for example error. Now you see the log is empty because there were no errors. So let's move it back to default severity. Now let's go to the revisions tab. Whenever you deploy a Docker image to Cloud Run, a new revision is created. So what we did is to create our first revision. Now let's talk about the revision URL. Usually the latest revision of our service is accessible using the URL above. But there might be cases where you have several parallel revisions and each one needs a separate URL. I would say this case is rather hypothetical, but let's just try it out. You can add a re revision URL and then you can give a tag to your revision. For example, first version. And then you can say save. And now you can see that the revision URL was created. And when you click on it, you can access your specific revision using first revision dot and then you have this auto generated URL. On the right side you see the complete service description. So everything which we configured in our last step is named here. For example the number of instances is 5 per maximum. We also see the CPU limit and the memory limit. When you click on YAML you get a complete text description of the service which you can use, for example, in a automated CI-CD deployment. One feature which is quite useless in my eyes is the possibility to split traffic between different revisions of your service. So you could, for example, have different revisions and you could say that the first revision gets 50% of the traffic and the second revision also gets 50% of the traffic. But I have no idea what this is good for. Please write in the comments what you think about that. Let's assume that you updated your container and you, you want to deploy again. Then you click on edit and deploy new revision. This of course only makes sense if this container changed, which it didn't, but it will later. You can change all the configuration values here. And then you could click on deploy and a new revision would be deployed. After the deployment of the new version has been completed, you see that the new revision gets 100% of the traffic and the old revision gets 0% of the traffic. Now we have the possibility to delete the old revision. The next tab, networking, just gives us the possibility to change the value which we already gave when we first deployed our Cloud Run service. We can allow public access or we can allow only internal access. The same is valid for the tab security. Here we can enable cloud IAM access, which means that we have a directory of people using cloud IAM and we give these people access to our application. Now let's talk about triggers and how your Cloud Run service receives requests. I would say the simplest way is a cloud service which just gets some web requests and responds to them. But there are scenarios where, for example, your data is being sent using a PubSub. And in order to read data from PubSub, you would need to write code. With EventArc, you can do it without writing code. I would say that these functions are very specific to Google Cloud Services. The same is valid for the integrations, which you might not really need from the first place. So let's skip that for now. When we click on YAML, you have the cool possibility to edit the YAML file. So if you prefer to type in your service declaration by hand, you can do it right now here. Here I could, for example, set the container currency from 80 to 90. And then I could save and deploy a new version. Very cool feature. One last word. You might be tempting to push the button set up continuous deployment, which means that you can code something 
and after committing it to the repository it's automatically deployed which is quite cool but this is connected to cloud build i would say that it's better to use github actions for this because github actions is widespread so let's close this one now so now it's time to host our own application in google cloud run if you didn't live behind the moon you might have heard of containers and docker this is exactly what we need let's assume we already have a container and now we have to upload our container to Google Cloud by using a container registry. And from this container registry, we can straight deploy it to Google Cloud Run. Our first step is to activate the container registry in Google. You can do it when you go to console.cloud.google.com, then you go to the navigation menu and you select more products. Under CICD, you will find a container registry and an artifact registry. The container registry is the old service from Google. It only hosts containers and it is cheaper than the artifact registry, which is quite new. The problem for the container registry is that it will kind of stop working after May 2024 and it's officially deprecated. So the only variant which we have is to try the artifact registry. The artifact registry can not only host container images, it can also host packages and it has some more features. So first let's enable it. After waiting for a minute or so, our artifact registry is running. Next, we create a repository. We can simply call it my cloud run repository. And what are we gonna host? Of course, Docker images. So Docker is the format to go. The mode of our artifactory is standard. There are possibilities to link our repository to another repository, so it's kind of a proxy for other repositories. We don't want to use it, we want to keep it simple, so let's stick to the standard mode. Next, we select the region. I would assume that it's best to select the same region as our Google Cloud Run service. So let's take Europe West 1. We can add a description. This is just a test. And we can add some arbitrary labels, which doesn't make much sense. Now let's talk about encryption. Unless you are working for a very, very confidential branch of industry, you will use the standard Google Management Encryption Key. So let's create our repository. After we created our repository, let's push a local Docker image into this registry. We need to select our registry and then click on Setup Instructions. In order to run this command, we need a command line tool called gcloud and of course we need docker. So let's install these two tools. Since we are using Ubuntu, the most simple version is to use snap to install the Google Cloud CLI. So I copy this command here from the Google help, paste it into a shell and execute it. The installation is finished. Next we need to connect to gcloud, so we use gcloud init, which we copy from here, paste it. Now we need to log in. I say yes. I need to select my account. And after I load access for Google, I am connected. Now I need to select the correct project. This is our project ID. If you are not sure about the project ID, you can go to console.cloud.google.com. Then you see your first cloud run project with a project ID, which is Sigma, Firmament, blah, blah, blah. So let's select it, number two. He asks us if we want a default compute region. I say yes. And I say my region is Europe West 1. To make it more difficult, Europe West 1 has three separate buildings, so I select number 17 and we are done. On this PC I still need to install Docker, maybe you already installed it, but if not, then you can find it on Google here. You can use the scroll command to install Docker. This will download a shell script. Linux tells me I need to install curl, so I say sudo snap install curl.
Now we can download a shell script which will install Docker. Then we execute the script and this will automatically install Docker without any hassle. So now that Docker has been installed, we can connect Docker to Google Cloud using this command, which we copy to the clipboard and then execute it. Let's see what happens. So he wants to install a so-called credential helper. We say yes, and that's it. The next step would be to write an application, dockerize it, and then push this Docker image to the container registry. Since I don't want to write an application right now, I just pull an existing container from the web, which I will reuse and do as if I had written it myself. So with the command docker pull, I pull an existing image from the web. As you might have noticed, I downloaded a small Tetris container and I also needed to use sudo for pulling it, which is not the way to go. So there's a small command which says take the current user and enable it to push, for example, Docker images. Now I need to log off and on again. Before we can push the image to the registry, we need to tag it. And this is the syntax. It's not that easy, but we can do it together. First of all, you need the source image. This is the image which you have on your hard disk. In my case, it's our Tetris. Then you need the location. You can find the location in the artifact registry. In our case, of course, it's Europe minus West 1. So let's replace location by Europe minus West 1. Next, we need the project ID. You will also find it in the Google console. You can click on the project drop down and copy the ID from here. Next, you need the repository name. You also get it from Google. It's simply my Cloud Run repo. So you can also copy this one and paste it here. Now you need to define an image name. This is a choice of yours. I just call it Tetris. And now you need a tag. I simply call it latest. Okay, so after we tagged our image, we can now push it to our artifact registry. The command is quite simple. I can replace tag by push and remove the source image. And this will push our tagged image to the registry. So everything has been pushed. Let's see if our image is really in our artifact registry. So we go to the Google Cloud Console. So when we select our repository, we will see that our Tetris image arrived there. Everything is fine. One really nice feature is the possibility to deploy this image directly from here. I can click on deploy and then say deploy to Cloud Run. And here you can see that our image is used at the container image URL. Then we can define a service name. We can define a region. This is as expected, Europe West 1. And then we can leave everything as it already was. I already explained it. For of course, for Tetris, we don't need authentication. So I created. Now our new service is being deployed. When we go back to our Cloud Run start page, we can see that two services are existing our Hello service, which has been deployed, and our Tetris service, which is in the process of being deployed. After waiting for some minutes, we finally see that somehow our application could not be started. In order to have a look at this, we need to go to the logs. So I click on my Tetris application and click on logs. So here we have our problem. When I see the Docker file from the container which I just run, I see it exposes port 80. So we need to change the port from 8080 to 80. In order to do this, we can click on edit and deploy new revision. And instead of using container port 80, 80, we use container port 80. So let's try that out. And this solved our problems. Now we can access the URL and we can play Tetris. That's cool. So now you can watch me play Tetris for the next 20 minutes.
Okay, you might get the impression that I'm not that talented in uh, playing Tetris, so let's go to the next chapter. So let's recap what we did in the last chapter. We kind of created our own application, which was in fact a ready-made Tetris game, available as a container. And then we uploaded this container to the Google Artifact Registry, and from there we deployed it straight to Google Cloud Run. But after some deployments, you will notice that this process takes a lot of time, it's annoying, and you want to automate this. Automation means building a so-called CI CD pipeline. So your developer or yourself, you commit to your repository and in the background an automated build is done. The most popular way is to use GitHub for this and there is a special tool in GitHub called GitHub Actions. Building a cloud run CI CD pipeline usually takes me one or two working days, it's very complicated, I make a lot of mistakes, so especially for this tutorial I found a very simple way to build a CI CD pipeline, but nevertheless this chapter is maybe the most complicated in this tutorial. So come on, let's go through this together. This small Tetris application is already available at GitHub, so what we can do is to clone it and change it a bit. As it turned out, there's a new feature on GitHub called Codespaces. So we want to create a codespace on master, which is just a copy of this JavaScript Tetris, and then we can add a GitHub act action to do all the deployment stuff. And here we are. What we see is something which looks similar to Visual Studio Code, but it's completely web-based and it allows us to create our GitHub action. As you remember, in our last chapter we had to change the port. Here we can directly click on the Docker file and change port 80 to port 8080. And we can also install the Docker extension. Now that we have made some changes to the fork, we want to keep them and convert them into our own repository. What we can do is to say my code spaces. And here we have our so-called fictional spork. So it's a kind of fork where we just play around and we can say we export these changes to a fork. And it wants to create a fork in our own space. So we create a fork. Okay, the fork has been created. We can see it now, we click on see fork. So this is our forked repository. Please note that of course we could have just written the application ourselves and committed to GitHub. So from here on, it doesn't matter if it's a fork or if it's our own repository. The steps are the same. We can create a GitHub action. We click on actions. The cool thing with GitHub actions is that there are a lot of pre-configured actions. So what we can do is simply search for Cloud Run. And we will find an action which will build and deploy directly to Cloud Run. This will do exactly what we want. We want to build a Docker container. We want to push it to the artifact registry and deploy it to Cloud Run. So let's configure this one. Okay, now things are getting a bit complicated, but let's go through this together. First of all, we need some preconditions. We have to make sure that Google Cloud APIs are enabled, Cloud One has to be enabled, and Artifact Registry also has to be enabled. This one will also already be the case if you follow the steps which we made in the last chapter. So we enable Cloud Run and we also enable the Artifact Registry. The next thing we have to do is to create a so-called Workload Identity Federation for GitHub. Let me drop some quick words about Workload Identity Federation here. The challenge is that GitHub Action needs to access Google Cloud. The so-called old-fashioned way was to store a password or a key in GitHub Actions and with this key access Google Cloud Run. This poses some security risks. For example, somebody else could steal your key. And moreover, you would, for example, need to renew the key every year. So after a year, people tell you, oh, my CICD pipeline doesn't work anymore. Workload Identity Federation means that every time when GitHub Action wants to access Google Cloud, it needs to authenticate and it only gets a short-lived temporary token. Moreover, we restrict the access to Google Cloud 
to our specific GitHub repository. So no other GitHub repository could accidentally push data into our cloud. In the Google terminology, we create a workload identity pool and inside this workload identity pool, we have a workload identity provider. And we also need to create a new account. This is the account of the GitHub Action. It's a technical account, so Google calls it service account. And this service account will get all the privileges in order to upload the image to the artifact registry and also do administrative work at Google Cloud Run. There's an URL which we need to follow. So let's follow the steps. First of all, you need to export your project ID. So let's copy this one, open your new console, paste it. And here you need your project ID, which you get from your cloud console. So we go to the cloud console and here we have our project ID, which we can copy to the clipboard. Next, we need to create a service account. The service account is the account which controls our cloud instances via GitHub Action. Now we need to enable the IAM Credentials API. Next, we need to create a workload identity pool. This has been created as my pool. Now we need the ID of the workload identity pool. Now we need to export this workload identity pool ID to a variable. So we paste this one. And instead of using the three dots, we use the workload ID. Now we need to create a workload identity provider on that pool. The next step is to export the repository to a variable. And here we fill in the name of our repository. So here we find the name of our repository, we copy it and we paste it here. Now we need to allow access to the workload identity provider for this repository. Now we need to extract the workload identity provider resource name. This is our workload identity provider resource name. So let's save this workload identity ID for later and go on with the next steps. Now we need to ensure that some required IAM permissions are granted. We already created our service account in the last step and now we need to give him some more privileges to do administrative stuff for Cloud Run. In order to give access to our service account user, we go to console.cloud.google.com, click on IAM and admin. IAM is already the right menu point, so we click on grant access. Here we search for our service account user, which is my service account. Then we select the role Cloud Run Admin. And we also need the role Artifactory Registry Administrator. Now we can save it. Please note that we also need to add the role service account user, which you can find here, to our account, my service account. Our next step is to create GitHub secrets for the WIF provider and WIF service account. When we scroll down, we can see that we are using a GitHub action called Google Auth and it's using the WIF provider and the WIF service account. Let's start with the WIF provider. So we take the name, copy it, then we go to settings. Then we go to secrets and variables. Of course, for GitHub Actions. 
and then we create a new repository secret. The secret name is VIF provider and the value can be directly copied from the shell. It's the workload identity pool provider. This one. Now we add another repository secret. This is the VIF service account. This is the name. We find this value when we go to IAM and here we have my service account and we can take this value and put it into the GitHub's action secret. We are almost done, but the GitHub action script still needs some values. I made a cut here because it took me some time to find out the correct values for the four environment variables. It turns out that the project ID has to be followed by a slash and the name of the artifactory repository. The GIR location is the location where the artifactory is hosted. I used Europe West 1. I also have to give the name of the service. Please note that the name of the service also has to be the name of the image in Docker. And this region has to be the region where Cloud Run is hosted. Before we execute our GitHub action, maybe let's have a quick look at the steps which it does. First, GitHub action authenticates to Google Cloud via the workload identity provider process. The next step is to connect Docker to the artifact registry. Then we are building and pushing the container to the artifact registry. And the last step is to trigger the deployment to Google Cloud Run. As you can see, this action has been provided by Google. We just need to fill in the values and in the background all necessary steps are done. We don't need to code anything. So let's commit our changes. We commit it directly to the master branch so we will trigger the GitHub action. And now we go to actions. We can see that our GitHub action is currently running, so let's wait a bit. And after some minutes you can see a green checkbox, which means that our GitHub action was successful. We can even click on it, click on deploy, and we see that all steps were successful. If something would have gone wrong, you would see an error here. You would then open it and have a look at the error message. So what I do now, I go to the console, of Google Cloud Run. I select Cloud Run from the navigation menu. And as you can see, Tetris has been deployed right now. So let's check it if it works. Voila, it works. Okay, we are almost done. In the last chapter, I show you how to access your Cloud Run application with a nice, bright and shiny URL. When you want to present your application to customers, you usually would go to Cloud Run, then you would select your application, and then here you would copy the URL. This URL is already fine. First of all, it uses HTTPS. So when you open your page, you can see that there is a certificate. And you can be sure that this URL will not change after redeployment of the application. There is only one problem. This URL uses a randomly generated part in order to be unique, so it's quite ugly. It would be very cool if you could use a custom domain. Google Cloud Run has a very smooth process of registering and using this URL, so let's do that together. On the Cloud Run start page, you get the option Manage Custom Domains. In this tutorial, we register our own domain, which is the most simple way. Of course, when you want your company to provide you an URL, things get a bit more complicated. So let's click on register domain. First of all, you have to enable the Cloud Domains API. And after a minute, you can already start searching for a domain. Let's try Discotheque. The cheapest domains start with $12 per year. So let's buy discotech.info. Oh my god, I'm paying $12 for a YouTube tutorial. 
I hope many people will watch this one. Now we continue. Next, we need to select a DNS provider. Since Google recommends to use Cloud DNS, I will use this one and continue. Now Google suggests to use privacy protection, which means that when you register a domain, you have to give your email address. So you might receive a lot of spam. So let's turn the privacy protection on, which means that our email is masked by another email. Now we need to give our contact details. Don't be afraid. As I just said, these contact details will not be publicly available. I filled in my personal data, clicked on register, and now the registering is in progress. The next step is to confirm your email address. You get an email and you have to click that you want to confirm your email. Sorry, it's in German. So by clicking on the confirmation link, I confirm that this one is my email address. After you confirmed your mail address, the registration of the domain is finished. The next step is to add a mapping. I click on add mapping. And first I select my service. I select the service hello. Then I select a verified domain. And I can even specify a subdomain, which is very cool. Because now I will take hello.discotheque.info. Now I continue and my mapping is verified. There is one step left. I manually have to update the DNS records. Since we use Google Cloud DNS, the steps are rather easy. You open the Cloud Console, open the Navigation Menu, then you go to More Products, then you select Network Services and then Cloud DNS. Now you click on the so-called Zone, this could take info. You click on Add Standard and now you go back to the pop-up and look at the values. So your name was Hello. You paste it at the DNS name. You also see that the type must be CNAME. So we select CNAME at the type. And the canonical name can be received from the pop-up using this data, which you can copy to the clipboard and paste here. So our subdomain is a kind of alias for Google Cloud Run. So let's save this. Now we click on Done. And you can see that Google Cloud Run is waiting for certificate provisioning. It means that a HTTP certificate is being generated for us automatically. This is a very cool feature because usually creating an HTTPS certificate is a pain in the ass. I would also like to point out that this automatic domain mapping and also the automatic HTTP certificate mapping is not available in all regions. As you can see, it's available in Europe West 1, which we selected as our region. After waiting for about 50 minutes or so, our domain mapping has been completed. You can see that there's a green checkbox here. We can even click on the domain and voila, our application is running. Let's have a look at the certificate. The certificate is valid. Job done. We are done. That's it. Thank you. After listening for an hour or two, you understood that most of the deployment tasks could be done with a click of a mouse button. This is really cool. This is how I like to work. I don't like long command line commands. My special thanks go out to the guy who created the Tetris container. It was fun to play. If you found this tutorial helpful, please leave a like. If you have a question left, please feel free to write a comment. It will help me to make my tutorials better in the future. I already tried to improve myself in the past, so now I have light, I have a microphone and I was working hard on getting over my German accent.